songs he's playing. There's going to be a meeting in the air. Are you waiting for that day? Are you? I sure am. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you this morning. I trust you've had a good week, and we praise God for you being here. And we'll meet our visitors in just a few moments. Right now, we're going to pray, have a couple of congregational songs. All right, let's bow our heads and ask God to help us. Lord Jesus, we pray in your precious name that you'll have preeminence in the service this morning. I pray, dear Jesus, that your presence would uh, be felt. And uh, Lord, for those that need to be saved, Lord, I ask you to today to convict them of their sins. Show them, Lord, how much you love them, how you care for them, and how you can change their life. I pray you'll bless the singing, the preaching, our fellowship. May you get honor and glory in it. In thy name I ask it. Amen and amen. amen. Which page? 323. 323. Let's all stand. 323. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages and His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior, standing, standing. That we're gonna go ahead and sing the one the page before that. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Three twenty-two. We'll sing that. We'll sing that other in a little bit. Amen. Amen. Stand up for Jesus. Amen. There you go. Stand up for Stand up, stand up for Jesus. He's soldiers of the if I royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Jesus, the trumpet call away, for to the mighty God, in this is for your strength. He that a man now serve him against a numbered foe, let courage rise with danger and strength to strength of Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in 
be seated. I tell you what, those are great songs, aren't they? And what a blessing they are to my heart and my soul. And uh, all right, it's a little bit warm outside. It's going to get warmer. I'm glad for air conditioner, aren't you? And somebody said, boy, I like the old time ways. I do too, spiritually. But I like the modern days when it comes to the uh, uh, inside the church building itself, okay? But uh, good to see you here today. We do have some visitors with us. It's always a great honor and a great joy to have visitors to be with us. And over here on my left, Miss Dell, you've got some visitors with you. Would you introduce them to us? Yes. All right. Sister and a granddaughter. Amen. You sisters still love each other? Yes. <laughs> she didn't even hesitate, Dale. I'm telling you what. Yes. I like that. That's praise God for that. And uh, it sure is good having you with us today. What a joy that is. And I don't see anybody, how anybody cannot love Miss Dale. Amen. And of course, I talked to Virgil when I talk about that a little bit. And. Uh, <laughs> All right. And here on my right are some folks from up in, from Ohio. They've been down in Georgia for a wedding, I think. And uh, a funeral. A wedding. Well, see, a wedding is really a funeral. Because you have two. <laughs> Amen. No, I don't mean it that way now. A wedding, you have uh, you have her dying to herself and him dying to himself, and they becoming one. Amen? So that's what I meant by that, okay? Amen. And uh, I, I've been dead now for 47 years. And, <laughs> and uh, all right, would you uh, introduce yourselves to us and uh, so we can meet you? These are Rick Drummond's members from up in Lebanon, Ohio. Go right ahead, brother. Well, we're sure glad to have you with us. You tell Brother Rick we said hello, and uh, nothing will happen between now and then. I'll be up at Brother Rick. They have a uh, meeting up there, a camp meeting up there, and uh, so we'll be up there in October it is. And so uh, the young lady, the daughter, was here for our camp meeting with Brother Rick and them, and so she's been here before, and so they're uh, with us this morning. Isn't that good? Amen. I praise God for that. All right, just a few announcements I want to bring to your attention. Uh, this morning, oh boy, I got to go get the, the little little pieces of paper. We're going to be voting on the Christian Man of the Year. Okay, <laughs> it'll be presented next Sunday uh, by last year's recipient, Brother Cecil Bird. I don't know if here's Brother Cecil. We were talking yesterday because he and I will count the votes today, and he can't see, I can't see, and uh, we're just going to pick out somebody we think ought to get it. Okay, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no, we'll, we'll we'll take care of it. Okay, and. Uh, so you make sure that when you have made it just a matter of prayer and uh, you vote uh, as God will lead upon you, the man that's, that you feel is uh, qualifies, he loves the Lord, loves church, loves God, a, a great family man, that's what you're looking for in the Christian man of the year. I did have a, I told them this, I said years ago, somebody had written down, on, when they voted, instead of writing the name, it says, uh, my daddy. How about that? My daddy. And so I put that for mine. <laughs> I took that vote. But no, do not vote for me. Do not vote for Brother Cecil. And uh, so please don't vote for me. I'm not in that. And uh, so you make sure you make that a matter of prayer, okay? And you'll be here next Sunday for Father's Day. It's always a great day. Now, in the bulletin, it has that the fellowship tomorrow will be at the Gethsemane Baptist Church. Uh, that is, That was a... Uh, that was original plans, but uh, Brother Charles Starling and his church uh, will now host it. It will be at the Hidden Valley Baptist Church in Casey, South Carolina. And the, uh, the Exhorter Magazine is back there. It gives you directions how to get there. It's about a good hour and a half, hour and 45 minute drive here from here to there. All depends on the traffic in Columbia and the interstate, okay? And it starts at 3 o'clock. And so if you can go, I know they'd love to have you there. Some more things coming up next Sunday's Father's Day. And then later, the last Saturday of this month, a youth meeting here. Uh, working on that. That's going to be a great time. It's not just for the youth. It's for everybody. We encourage you to come and be a part of this. And yesterday, the, the young folks met. And they went out and, and handed out tracts, did some visitation, met some people. And so uh, that inspires me and blesses me to know they're doing that. appreciate the, the adults who are working with that group to do that. The greatest thing you and I could ever do other than getting saved would be to see somebody else get saved. Amen? 
So we're thankful for that. All right. But anyway, that's all the announcements right now. The choir's going to sing. I got to go get the stuff, the little ballot papers. I'll be right back as the choir sings. Amen.
Aren't you glad of that? Let's stand up and speak to each other for a few seconds, okay? Speak to your neighbor. the visitors right down here at the third pew from the front young lady got a beautiful smile we always say the best for last you're the best visitor we got today okay uh and since she says she's your visitor is that true Stephanie. well okay well somebody's got to introduce her okay noah said i know who she is so she knows noah how about that and we're sure all right, we're sure glad to see you. All right, we have another visitor right here. All right, Miss Wims' daughter. Okay, and uh, glad to have her back with us. That's a blessing. On the other side, we got some more back there. Larry, Gloria's family, and Larry had surgery this morning, ten o'clock on his foot, and so we're looking for a good recovery. Hope things went well. I sent her to see him yesterday, and he's he's laid up. And uh, Larry said, "Preacher, I ain't got a foot stand on." <laughs> I said, you've got one foot you can stand on. We don't have two, okay? And uh, all right, it's always good having visitors with us. Amen, amen. Who had a birthday this past week? Anyone or maybe recent weeks? We've missed you. We want to uh, recognize you, and we have a gift for you. If I can find it. There we go. Anybody have a birthday? Nobody have a birthday. Any, any recent anniversaries last week or two? Anybody? Joe Ben and Joanne. How many years? I should have asked him. You reckon he'd have known? He does now. He would have known 52. 52 years. How about that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Over here's a big box. That's for you. I think that's for your daughter. It's getting married Saturday. I told her, I said, that's 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 5,000 goobers <laughs> in that box. No, it's not a heavy box, but it's a gift. Her daughter and their daughter is getting married Saturday. It's going to be a death in the family. Yeah, she's going to die to herself and marry that fella, you know. You don't look too happy about it, Rick. <laughs> you were ready. He said, I was ready for it three weeks ago or something or other. <laughs> this Saturday. All right. And uh, speaking of this Saturday, uh, uh, this Friday, some of our young folks, which uh, accompanied by some of our adults, be going, are going up to Burlington, North Carolina. There's a tremendous camp meeting going up, or tent meeting, I mean, going on up there. Brother C.T. Townsend, I think they've had one night, they had 35 saved. And thus far, they've had to bring in 1,500 more chairs. So you're looking at maybe three or 4,000 people. How many, how many Chris? All right, 4,000 chairs out, still had 200 or more outside. And so it's a tremendous meeting up in Burlington, North Carolina. I think 35 different pastors and churches are 
in it now, involved in it, and so and it's got a it's got a what they say is it's got that that touch of God in it that you don't want to stop it. Aren't you glad to hear that? Uh, you know, I've been praying revival breakout anywhere, and so they are going to go up there on this Friday. Go to the it's, this Friday is, is is youth night in the under the tent, and of course they'll be home Saturday. And so let's pray they'll have a great journey up there and a great journey back and enjoy the service. Okay, you pray for that meeting and, and all this involved. Hey, when you can get thirty five preachers to come together for something, that's a miracle in itself. Yes, Amen. So anyway. I uh, want to uh, call that to your attention. And Mrs. King, uh, Johnny King's wife, who was here last Sunday uh, night uh, filling in for me, she's going to have uh, surgery this Thursday. So if you'll just put her name down, Sister King's name down, and pray for this Thursday. So I think Joanne, about the same type of surgery that you had to have. She's, she's going to be having that. And so we'll pray for Sister King this coming week. Okay? All right. I'd like for... Uh, you see, Brother Tommy Dandridge and Brother Rob, would you come, please? I want you, if you're a member of our church and you're 16 years old, I want you to take a piece of paper, write down the name of the man that you would feel is a, be the Christian man of the year. I pray you have uh, put this, uh, some great thought in this. And so you have to be a member of our church and 16 years old to do that. And uh, we'll announce it next Sunday. And uh, Mr. Mr. Bird and I will do that. Okay, give, you give Ruth, Ruth is over 16, you can give her one. Yeah, we went up uh, this past week, went away for a few days, uh, and Ruth goes up to the farmer's market on Saturday and tries to sell some baked goods. You need to get up there and buy her stuff, okay? It's good. Uh, I bought a pecan pie from her, and my brother-in-law ate, ate the whole pie. Yeah, and I said, you hog you? He said, well, you brought everybody to eat, didn't you? <laughs> So, uh, anyway, all right, just hand them out. Make sure you get one now. You're a member of the church at 16 years old or up. And don't put on there my daddy. Well, I have no idea who that is or my uncle, okay, or my husband. All right, Christian man of the year. What a great honor that'd be. Amen. All right. Getting those handed out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Would you look back there in that corner? Yeah. Three little fellas standing in a row. I might not sing that song. I use this three little monkeys standing in a row. But those are good men back there. JB must learning something back there in that PA system. Amen. That it? Everybody's got one. Make sure if you didn't get, if you're a member of our church and you're 16 years old or older, you get that piece. Of info. Now listen, don't fold it one time, not not 15 or 20 times. One time, put it in the offering plate if you want it, and then and with a with a 50 dollar bill with it. Thank you, but you get you get one for yourself. You got one? Everybody's got one. You got one? Got one. All right, he's already put his in. Robbie, you got yours? Okay, amen. I right, do not vote for me. Do not vote for Mr. Bird. And uh, we'll count them out to church. And the only way you'll find out who won this thing is to give, give us both $500. And we'll tell you exactly who won it. So if you've got $1,000 you don't want to throw away, you see Brother Bird and I, we'll take your $1,000 and lie to you. <laughs> we'll, we'll, tell you we'll tell you who, it wasn't, who, who the winner wasn't. All right. Okay. Uh, now we're going to sing another song and receive this morning's tithes and offerings. Hope you're ready to do that. It's always a part of the worship service. So let's give obediently and let's give cheerfully. All right. A couple of verses of a good song. Amen. All right. Let's stand once again. Turn to page 337. 337. We'll sing the first and last. Trust and obey. Amen. Let's all stand. Oh, and we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. Oh, what a glory He shed on our way. Oh, while we do His good will, He abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but 
but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. Oh, what he says we will do, where he says we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Well, those two words go hand in hand, don't they? Uh, to uh, obey him is to trust in him, to trust him is to obey him. So two great words we need to live by. All right, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you again thanking you so very much for what you've given us in life and even the strength and the ability, dear God, to have a job and have an income and be able to provide for our families, Lord, the necessities of life and even more. And you've told us time and time again, Lord, how you'd bless those who give cheerfully and obediently. That's what we want to do. We pray now you'll bless it. Please give us wisdom as a church family, Lord, to spend it wisely on those things, dear God, that would honor and glorify you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. I was thinking while she's playing that song, looking over there at Brother Rick. Well, he's not here. Look at, is he? 
looking where he was. I was thinking about him anyway. Where's Rick at? Daughter, their daughter Karen's getting married Saturday. You mothers know, of course, daddies know too, but uh, there's a lot that goes into a wedding, amen? And their daughter's getting married. How about that? Amen. We hope not many years down the road, you'll be a grandmother. How about they ain't married yet? I'm talking about grandkids, ain't it? Give them time, okay, Miss B. I'll give them time. Uh, I'll give them a year, okay? All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last Sunday morning, I preached on the word reality. And we used our text from Luke chapter 16 as we dealt about uh, Jesus gave the true story of two men who died. One, a, be uh, a beggar named Lazarus, and the other a rich man. We dealt with the fact of the reality of life, that you're alive, and what life consists of, it consists of time, it consists of, of, of uh, uh, choices and what you do with your time and choices and time is money. We found out the reality of life. Then we found out the reality of death. We all face death in our families and, 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 and death is a part of life, the reality of death. And then we, uh, our third thing was the reality of heaven. There is a real heaven, amen? And then the reality of hell, and then number five, the reality of eternity. And so uh, this morning, I want to sort of follow that same trail, but in just a little different way. Uh, you don't need to turn there. I'm just going to refer to this before I get to our main scripture this morning. But over in the book of Revelation, chapter 21 and chapter 22, it, God gives us a wonderful picture of what awaits all of those who have trusted Christ as our Lord and Savior. If you've been born again, God tells us that there is a city that awaits us, a land that awaits us, a place called heaven. Amen? Uh, one of the things that helps me, gets me through uh, hard times and difficult times in my life, and I'm, I, I'm glad to be able to share it with people, when they're going through difficult times, and especially if death is nearby, is the reality of heaven. Aren't you glad there's a heaven? Amen. And Jesus has prepared a place called heaven. Well, in Revelation 21 and 22, he gives us some things. In, that, in those chapters, you'll find some things where it says there's no more. Uh, there's, there's no more death. There's no more sorrow. There's no more crying, no more sadness, no more sickness, no more pain. So heaven is a place of no mores. Everything that we that that bothers us here, everything that would grieve us, everything that would trouble us, everything that is in the negative will not be in heaven. Say amen. amen. So we're going to go to a place called heaven. It's the land of no mores. No more of anything that's bad. Amen. No more devil. No more sin. No more temptation. And so I'm looking forward to that wonderful place called heaven. It will be my eternal home because of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. But there is another place that is a land of no mores. It's a place called hell. And this morning, with the help of God, I want to preach on that thought, hell, the land of no mores. And, uh, boy, it really burns my heart to preach on hell. It really tugs at my soul because of the reality of it. We should never, we should never wish anybody to go to hell. We should never even glory in the fact that somebody has gone there that we thought was wicked and horrible. And because hell is a horrible place. I, this past week, we, the news media was all, all to do about uh, Muhammad Ali or Cassius Clay as he was known by before he changed his name his Muslim name and the fact that he died and all through I got a magazine calling him the greatest the greatest has died the greatest has died I got news for you there's a million times more greater than he is but the greatest is Jesus Christ amen and in the, in the reality and you see I only have one authority and it's the Bible okay and the reality is this, that, that based on what the Bible says, Muhammad Ali is not in heaven. He never was born again. 
And so uh, it matters not what the world attaches to a man or woman in their greatness. You see, there are a lot of people who are famous but not great. I will not take away from the fact that he was a great boxer. That's about it. I'm not saying he was the greatest boxer, but he was a great boxer. But there's a difference between great and famous. I mean, famous. You can be famous and not be great. And there's a lot of great Christians who are not famous. There are a lot of great people who are not famous. Amen? But when you die, or anybody dies, it does not matter of the magnitude of their greatness or ungreatness on this earth. What matters is where they're going to spend eternity. Amen? And so I thought about this thought about hell. Hell is a place, listen now, it's a place that awaits all those who have not trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. In other words, uh, being a church member, being a Baptist, being a Methodist, tag on anything you want to tag on, there is absolutely no, no way to get to heaven without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. You can be on this church roll or any church roll or 15 church rolls. Uh, a man or woman can be involved in civic organizations and, and give their life to for good deeds that will not get anybody into heaven. They'll still go to hell. It is a real place, a real place. God does not desire that any go there. The Bible tells us, Jesus says, uh, uh, that he does not, he does not uh, it's not the will of any God that anybody perish, but that all come to repentance. God does not delight, God does not delight in the punishment of those who go to hell. He does not, it grieves his heart. And so it's a place, a real place. God does not delight, desire that any go there. Listen, how do we know that? The cross proves that God does not desire anybody to go there. Because God gave himself through his son Jesus to die for our sins, that, that our sins could be forgiven and we could be, we could be united back with God. And, and that's the only way it can be done is through what Jesus has done. Notice the words of Jesus Christ. I want you to get your Bible out. And uh, we're going to take just a little, a little trip now uh, from the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 5, in verse 27 through 30. Matthew 5, 27. Get there as quickly as you can, okay? Matthew 5, 27. I'm going to begin reading. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's Matthew 5, 27. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her that committeth, uh, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. But notice the continuation of what Jesus says. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into what? Hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should uh, perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into what? Hell. Wow. So Jesus refers to hell in the matter of, of uh, what, if you've got anything in your life, and here he talks about lusting a woman. If there's anything in your life, any member of your body, that's so attached to any type of sin that would keep you from turning to God. He said, it'd be better for you to cut your hand off uh, or your, pluck your eye out than to die holy and go to hell. That's how bad hell is. Let's go on over, okay? Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 26. Matthew chapter 10, verse 26. <clears throat> Fear them, Jesus said, Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Isn't that a verse of scripture? What I tell you in darkness, that speak in light, speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill what? The what? Body, 
but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body, where? In hell. In hell. Think about that. Then note if you would, chapter 18 of the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 8. Matthew 18, 8. Aren't you glad you brought your Bible? Now Jesus is going once again reiterating what he said in chapter uh, chapter 5. But he goes, it gives a little more detail. In, in, in chapter 18, verse 8. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into, what's the next word? Everlasting what? Fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into what? Hell fire. Wow. Then one more verse in, in, uh, uh, in, in the book of Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Verse 43. Once again, these are the words of our Savior. Somebody said Jesus was not a hard preacher. <laughs> oh my goodness. Mark 9, 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire. Listen now. Mark adds a little more to what Luke's, I mean, to what uh, Matthew said. Hands it into the fire that never shall be what? So it's an eternal fire. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not what? Quenched. If thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to be in a halt into life, and having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And he goes on, if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. Why? He says the same thing uh, because two eyes into hell and where the worm dieth not, the fire is not quenched. Three times Jesus said that, that the fire is not quenched. The fire is not quenched. You see, your soul will never die. Your soul and spirit will never die. Your physical body will die. Okay, it'll die. But at the resurrection, that's the first resurrection, that's the resurrection of the people of God as you and I. We're going to end up in heaven. And then there's, a, there's another resurrection. It's a resurrection of the damned. Those who have already died and they've gone, they've gone to hell. And that's where they are right now. They'll be resurrected out of hell to face a judgment and then cast in the lake of fire where the fire's not quenched. Think about this now. In the book of Luke, you don't need to turn there, but in Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 30, we read last Sunday morning about the rich man and the, and the poor man who died. And it plainly says that the beggar died, and, and, and that's all it said, that he died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. So the, the beggar died, no funeral, no burial was mentioned. He just died. They probably took his body, since he was an old beggar, and took it over to the trash tea. They call it Gehenna. That's where it comes in the Bible. In the New Testament, that word hell means Gehenna. It's the place where they, a fire was always burning. And you could take your trash there, dead animals, trash, and throw it in. And it was consumed. They probably took the body of Lazarus and took his body over to Gehenna, the place where the fire was always burning, and throw it in. But the rich man died, and it says, and uh, the rich man died and was buried. So they buried him. And I mentioned maybe he had, a, uh, maybe he had great influence and great power and great money. No doubt his funeral was, was, was about like Muhammad Ali's. But the Bible says that when uh, the beggar died, he ended up in Abraham's bosom, which is a type of heaven, which is heaven. And the rich man died and in hell he opened his eyes being in torments. That's a real story. And we could preach on that every week if we needed to, but I'll not do that. Today, right now, as I stand here behind this pulpit and you sit in that pew, Billions, not millions, but billions of people are already in hell. Already in a place 
where the fire is not quenched. A place that will be that, that will be their home for all of eternity. That the only time they will get, come out of hell, those who are there right now, they will come out, they'll be resurrected out of hell according to Revelation chapter 20 and 21. They'll be, they'll be taken out of hell where they are now and they'll, be, they'll stand before the great white throne judgment and they'll be judged and cast into the lake of fire. They're going to go from one hell to another. Billions. Can you imagine billions? And the thing is, according to Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, more people will end up in hell than in heaven. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 talks about, about two ways and two gates. One way leads to, to uh, heaven and it says, and few be that find it. And another way and a gate that leads to destruction and many be that enter therein. So Jesus plainly tells us, plainly tells us more people will die without being saved than will be saved and end up in that place called hell. Which road are you on this morning? Which, which gate have you entered in? Now think about it. Everybody's born on the way of destruction. Brother Jimmy, everybody's born lost. Now if a child, an infant child, a child who's not yet learned or know can comprehend salvation, I believe in my heart the Bible makes it plain uh, that for such is the kingdom of heaven. Talking about children, they go to heaven. It'd be better... If, if, if a child were to die before he or she reached the age of accountability, it'd be better for them to die in, a, in infancy than to live and never be saved. Oh, boy. Let me ask you two questions. Who do you know that is already there? Who do you know that's already, I'm talking about you, some, not just some figure out there, but who do you know is there? Is there somebody in your family that's died without God and going to hell? Nobody, nobody wants to think that. Everybody wants to think, well, you know, maybe I just maybe they got in. I sure hope so. But who do you know? Listen, I have family members that are in hell. And I don't rejoice in that. I, and it grieves my heart just, just thinking about that. Who do you know that's already there? And the thing is, They'll never come out. They'll never be out. It's their home forever. Here's another question. Number question number two. Who do you know that is now headed there? Who do you know that's already there? And who do you know right now that's headed there? Could it be your son or daughter, your grandchildren, a grandchild? Could it be your mom or dad, your grandparents? Do you realize that? That just because somebody is old in years and, and feeble and, 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 and up in years and, and they become nice and kind, that they're going to go to heaven. I got news for you. Nobody goes to heaven outside the cross of Calvary. Amen? I don't care how good grandma is. I don't care how good grandpa is. If they've never had a, have never been born again, they're not going to go to heaven. And, and so I could go on and on about that. There are people you and I know right now that are headed that place called hell. Are you praying for them? Does it burden your heart? We're talking about a place of eternity where the fire's not quenched. And you and I, it seems like we don't care. I said it seems like it. I don't know your heart and you don't know mine, but God knows my heart and God knows your heart. Does it not bother you? Think about this. Hell is the worst of the worst. Think of any, any, any place, anything that you consider, I'd hate to be there. Hell's worse. How about this? <clears throat> no horror movie could ever depict hell. A lot of churches at, at, at Easter time have what they call passion plays. And they try to depict, you know, what, what, it, what, it, what Jesus went through. But do you know what? No passion play could ever depict what he went through. Now, here's why. If you really want to depict it, 
told one fellow, he said, oh, Brother Baker said, I went to a passion play. It was as close as the nearest, it was as close as real you'd ever see. I said, did you really see him drive the nails through the man's hand? Well, no. <laughs> How could it be real? Did you really see them pound that, uh, uh, was that thorns just placed on his head or was it slammed on his head? He said, well, they didn't do that. I said, that's no work. Now, passion plays good. I'm not saying it's bad. But there's no way you can depict it. There's no way that Hollywood or anybody could depict the real hell. None. You young kids are here, maybe some of you middle-aged adults, uh, now they got video games with creatures and monsters and all this on it. Hey, that's nothing compared to hell. It's beyond, listen, hell is beyond words and so is heaven. Hell, a place of no more. Can I give you a few? If you're not saved this morning, don't be lost another day. If you're not saved this morning, get saved this morning. I'm telling you, hell is not worth you. Hell is not worth you sitting there thinking, well, I hope I'll get in and what will people think? And I'm not ready yet. I'm telling you, are you ready to go to hell? Uh, listen, listen, at the age of 19, I was headed to hell until, I, until the Lord Jesus, uh, I got saved and, and born again and changed my life. Can I tell you, first of all, Hell is a place of no more water. Luke 16, verse 24, the rich man died. And here's what the Bible said. He said, would you get Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue? For I am tormented in this flame. There is no water in hell. We just read there in Mark chapter 9, the fire is not quenched. If you've ever burnt your finger, if you've ever, ever had a burn at all, you know how painful it is and, and how you want some relief from it. You're going to do this and do that. Can you imagine uh, somebody in hell that will never, ever have another drop of water? Not one dew drop. Nothing. There's no water in hell. You ever said, I'm thirsty? Your body, your body has to have water. There's more water in your body than any other element. You must have water to sustain life. Listen to me. In hell, there's no water. None whatsoever. And think about that. And so, I got to hurry along. I could spend a long time on just the water part. You, you, you like, I love water. My water, I don't have no water up here. Water. Just a drink of water. I was cutting grass yesterday and I stopped one time and got me a bottle of water and then when I got through, I got me another bottle of water and, and I love water. Boy, I'm, glowing. I'm, I'm glad I'm going to a place called heaven and there it says the river of life flows from the throne of God. There's plenty of water in heaven. Not one drop in hell. Number two, the land of no more is no more family. What? No more family. If you have a family member in hell, you'll never see them. You'll never meet them. No. No more family. Now think about it. You will never ever see your mother again. You'll never hear your mother's voice. Actually hear it. You'll never, you'll never see your daughter or son again. You'll never see a grandmother. You'll, you'll never ever see. There'll be no family members there that you can acquaint yourself with. You may, you will hear voices in hell and it will be the voices of those who are screaming in anguish and gnashing of teeth, the Bible says, and the fire's not quenched. There'll be no family members in hell that you'll ever meet. Your dad has died. You know, the, in, in, Luke, in Luke 16, the rich man in hell, he said, would you send Lazarus to my father's house? For I have five brothers. And I, won't, hey, I don't want them to come here. Go tell him to warn my five brothers. Why? This rich man knew that his brothers were just like him. And they were coming to the same hell he was in. He didn't want them there. If you've got somebody in hell right now, 
in hell right now they're saying, please don't come here. Please don't come here. Get saved. Trust Jesus. Don't come here. There's no family in hell. Secondly, I mean, listen, there are no friends in hell. These, these cold-hearted, callous men and women who have the idea that when I get to hell, I'll just join my friends. You will, but you won't meet them. You won't see them. You might hear their cries and their anguish, but you, there'll be no, there's no buddy system in hell. Do you realize in hell there are no brave people? Oh my, listen, no friends there. Think of the friends you have now. Think of those that you went to school with and grew up with in your neighborhood. Think of the friends that you know right now, your co-workers or your classmates at school. If they die without Jesus, they'll never see you again. If you die and you're not saved, you'll never see them again. There are no friends in hell, none whatsoever. Peer pressure, there's no peer pressure in hell. Hell's a place of no water, no family, and no friends. Oh, my heart grieves. Oh, it grieves. Brother Baker, can it get any worse? Oh, I'm telling you, it's the worst of the worst. It's beyond words. Hell's a place of no laughter. No laughter. Whew, boy. The Bible says that, that uh, it talks about the merriment of the heart and how we have joy in Jesus. And, but there's no laughter in hell. In hell. You, you like you like to hear people laugh. Now my wife's got an unusual laugh. I mean, you put her a thousand women, she laugh. I'd hear it. Joanne's got a Joanne's got a. I could pick her her laugh out. And Angie's got one. Some of you, who here knows somebody who's got an unusual laugh? Raise your hand up real high. Some of you got okay. You may have one. Okay. Miss Baker's got a crazy sneeze too. It's, I mean. How about the laughter of children? You like to hear children laugh? I love it. I love the sound of laughter. Now, you can't laugh your way through life. You know that. But isn't it, isn't it nice to be able to laugh? A merry heart doeth good like a what? Medicine. In hell, there is no merry heart. In hell, there is no laughter. You'll not hear any of it. There'll be none there. Think about it. A place of no laughter. A place to where all you hear is the screams and cries of those in the same state everybody's in. A state of horror. A state of, 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 of desire to never be filled. How about this? Hell's a place of no beauty. You know there's some beautiful places on this earth, isn't it? I mean, Mrs. Bacon and I took a few days off and went up to Lake Watery, and we have some friends there who've got a, uh, a cabin. When I say a cabin, bless God, it's a cabin. It's, it's, <laughs> it's about the size of the choir loft. And, uh, but, but it's a beautiful place. And we took some pictures of the, of the lake and just the surroundings. I said, isn't this beautiful? Well, Jim, we'd look out and say, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. Listen, in hell, there's no beauty. None whatsoever. There's hey, the beauty of a sun. We took a beautiful picture of the sunrise. I mean, gorgeous. We took a beautiful picture of the sunset. In hell, there's no sunrise, no sunset. And boy, I thought, boy, did, I've seen pictures of the Alps. I've seen pictures of the Grand Canyon. I've been to the Grand Canyon one time. And I've seen some great pictures of great places. I've seen some great places. The Smoky Mountains. I'm telling you, in hell, there's no beauty. The eyes of the soul in hell will never see anything beautiful. Nothing. Nothing. It's a place of, of no beauty. How about this? And when I say that the reason there's no beauty is because there's no light there. It's a, it's, a, it's a darkness that we cannot understand. It's a darkness that, and it's a fire that burns but not a fire that you can see. It's a place of outer darkness the Bible calls it which means you'll not be able to see anything but the, the flame that's there and the fire that's there consuming, but you'll never perish, you'll never burn up. It's forever and forever and forever and forever. No joy, no light. 
Do you realize it's a place of no rest? No rest. We all like to rest, don't we? And, uh, and the older we get, the more rest we like. Praise God. You ever been off somewhere? Uh, not often that this has happened, but there's sometimes you go on a vacation. And when you get back from your vacation, when you're supposed to vacation, you're supposed to go off and do what? And rest a little bit. But for most people, when they get off their vacation, they need a vacation to get over to vacation. I need to get home and, two, and rest for two days. But it, hell, there's no rest. No place to lay your head. Place of no rest. I got a chair I like to sit in. I rest in that chair, Brother Tom. I got a bed I can, I can lay in. I like to rest in that bed. In hell, there's no rest. Hell, the place of no more. No rest. No rest. It's a place of no comforts. A place of absolutely no comforts. Heaven is a place of eternal comfort. Heaven's a place of eternal rest. But hell's a place of no rest and no comfort. None. Hell's a place of no peace. No peace of mind, no peace of heart, no peace. Throughout all eternity in hell, the heart will be just full of anger and bitterness. And listen, out of the mouths of people in hell right now will come uh, uh, words of, of, of hatred. In other words, when a person dies without God and goes to hell, they don't become humble. They curse God. Why am I here? And they'll scream and curse God in a place of no peace. But heaven's a place of perfect peace. And I got news for you. I got peace now. I really do. How do you have peace now, Brother Baker? Because the Prince of Peace lives inside of me. Jesus. Heaven's a place of peace. Hell's a place of no peace. How about this? There's no fulfillment in hell. What do you mean by that, Brother Baker? No fulfillment. Think about this now. You ever get hungry? You do, don't you? And you want to eat. I don't do this very often, but sometimes I do occasionally, which is very rare. But yesterday, I, we got home and I cut the grass. When I got through cutting the grass and weed eating, it was 9 o'clock. It's almost dark. And I came in, I was a mess. Okay? And I was hungry. And she said, I got supper for you. I said, awful late. She said, what do you want? I said, well, give me some of this and this and this and this and this. <laughs> I said, first I said, I don't want much. <laughs> Give me some of this, this, this. And I ate more than I should have ate that late. But I wanted to be filled. Hell's a place of no fulfillment. Now here's what I mean by that. The drug addict, there'll be no drugs there. And the drugs that he or she craved on earth, they'll crave for all eternity. I gotta have a fix. I got I to gotta have a shot. I got I to gotta have a can of beer. I got to have a cigarette. I gotta, uh, 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 I'm about to starve. And, and Jesus talked about how, how men lust after women. And so there'll be no fulfillment in hell on this earth. Men who are wicked, ungodly, they'll rape a woman. Why? So they can fulfill their lustful desire. Hell's a place of no fulfillment. Everything that a man or woman desires here on this earth, they'll desire it in hell but never be fulfilled. Never. They'll crave it for eternity and never get one ounce of fulfillment. Oh, I'd love to have a Budweiser. I'd love to have a shot. I'd love to have a glass of water. I'd love to have a glass of tea. Oh, God. No fulfillment. Where's my wife? Where's my children? Oh, God. In hell, there's no help. In hell, there's no help. Wow. <laughs> what do you say about that? There's no help in hell. There's help now. Amen? But there's no help in hell. You can't call somebody and say, I need some help. 
we had a, while we were up there this week, we had a flat tire. Thank God it was at the place where we were and it just went down. I ran over a, a used bullet case an inch long. Went all the way through the tire. And so uh, my tire was just shot. <laughs> no bullet casing. And, and so I needed some help. So my brother-in-law, Robbie, was there. So he helped me change the tire. He wouldn't let me do it. He wanted to tell me how to do it. So I cooked his goose. And he said, let me help you. And I, I said, Rob, no, let me help you. I said, okay. I just stood there and watched him. He said, aren't you going to help me? I said, you won't let me help you. He said, I'm helping you. I said, well, let me help you. The point I'm saying is, in this life, you can get some help, can't you? You can call somebody sometimes, or you call on the Lord, but let me tell you, you can't get no help in hell. You can't pick up the phone call 911. You can't, you, can't, you can't call anybody. There is no help in hell. And then let me say this to you. This might be the last thing I'll say. There's no hope in hell. And I believe probably this is the hardest, the worst thing about hell. The help is bad enough and the other things are bad enough. But in hell, there's absolutely no hope. Your only hope of heaven, your only hope of not going to hell is now. And that hope and that help is in the one who died for the whole world. Amen? A place of no hope. My, I made this statement last Sunday. I'll make it again. And, and it, boy, this, this really just overwhelms me when I, when I just think about it. The fact is, if you die without God and go to hell, God will wipe you from the memory of everybody who knew you. God will wipe you from his memory. You will be in a place to where nobody will remember you. God will take your name and your out of every mind in heaven. Years ago, I was asked this question, how could we enjoy heaven, preacher, knowing our loved ones are in hell? At the time, I didn't know the answer. But now I know. In heaven, all things are what? New. God will give you a new mind in heaven. He'll give you a new memory. No, we could not enjoy heaven knowing loved ones are in hell. So the Bible says, we'll know even as we are known. A place of no help, a place of no hope. For God will put people with the devil and all the demons of hell will be in hell. Forever. There they be. Oh. Well, if I wasn't saved this morning, I, I wouldn't sit in that pew another 30 seconds. If I wasn't saved, I'd find my way to this altar and get down here and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Save me. You say, oh, you ought not get saved not to go to hell. Whatever reason why you want to get saved. You ought not scare people. I'm not trying to scare them. I'm trying to warn people. Somebody's house is on fire and they're sitting in the living room don't know it. I'm going to tell them your house is on fire. Get out. But today it seems like the church doesn't care and the preachers don't care and Christians don't care. There is a heaven. Let's tell them how to go. But I'm telling you, there's a hell and more going there than going to heaven. And we, we, we ought to empty out the track rack. We ought to uh, take all the time we can and tell folks about him. Now you can't, you, can't, you can't browbeat people. You can't make them get saved, but you sure can warn people. Amen? Oh my. I will say this about hell. You will have a perfect memory. For the worm dieth not. And that some say there's two, there's two pictures here, and I quite, hadn't quite decided on which, which one it is. Some of, the, some of the people who understand the Greek and the Hebrew a little more than I do say that word memory, that word worm means your memory, and some think it really means the worm. Either one's bad, isn't it? But you will have a perfect memory. Everybody in hell is going to have a perfect memory. They can remember, they can remember every, everything that they knew on this earth. They can remember the earth. They can remember everything about their life. The chances they had to be saved. Just knowing that God, hey, folks who believe evolution over, over, over creation, they can remember that. I believe the lie. My school teacher lied to me. Uh, my, my principal lied to me. My 
preacher lied to me. My preacher said if I'd be good, I'd go to heaven. My preacher said if I'd get baptized. My preacher said this. And my preacher said, turn over and you leave. And I did that. Here I am in hell. Uh, you need a new birth, not a new leaf. So this morning, who do you know is already there? They can't come out. Who do you know that's going there? Are you? Be saved today. Aren't you that glad that God's prepared a way? I'm glad I know I'm going to heaven. Amen, amen. Peace and joy in my heart. A changed life. I'm not perfect and I mess up and I do things I ought not do. I disobey the God in more ways than, I, than, I, than I'm proud of. But I'm telling you this, I'm glad I'm going to heaven. Amen. I'm glad I'm not going to hell. I don't want you to go. And I'll tell you this morning, I love you enough to tell you this, don't go to hell. It's the worst of the worst and awaits everybody who dies without Jesus Christ. I, I Listen. Salvation is simple. It's not hard. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's it. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and thou shalt be saved. Childlike faith, Jesus said, just like a little child. Would you come this morning if you're not saved? And say, Brother Baker, I need to be saved. Oh, listen to me. Hey, junk your church membership. Junk your own intentions and get right with God. Amen. Hell's not worth you going there. Well, I got a daddy there. You'll, you'll never see your daddy. I got a lot. You'll never see him. Come and be saved. Amen. And if you are saved, who do you know is going there? Would you not pray every day for them? I've got folks every day I try to pray for that I know are lost. Some in my own family. If they die, I know where they're going. I'm thankful their blood won't be on my hands. And I pray for them. I send them sermons. I try to I witness to them. I don't browbeat them. Well, would you come this morning and say, God, help me not forget this message that I've got friends and folks that I know are going to hell. I want to pray for them. But if you're not saved, won't you come this morning and be saved? Amen. A new name written down in glory. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. That could be yours today. Let's bow in prayer. Now, Holy Spirit, I have delivered what you've given me to the best of my ability. But I can't do anything else, God. You're going to have to do the rest. And there's no doubt in my mind and my heart there's somebody here, Lord, who needs to be saved. Who that is and where they are, I have no idea, but thou knowest. It could be some man, some woman, some boy or girl that we think are saved, but they're not saved. Lord, I pray today for them. Lord, whoever it is, I pray they'll come. Say, Preacher Baker, pray for me or show me how I can be saved. And I will, Lord. And God, I ask today to get a hold of our hearts of Christians. May we not forget the reality that we have folks going there we know of. And we need to, we need to care for them as best we can. So burden our heart for our lost family and friends and loved ones. In the time we have left, in thy name I pray. Amen and amen. Let's stand to our feet. Would you come find a place at the altar? If you can't kneel, just stand and pray. Place of no more. No more joy. No peace. No comfort. No water. No family. No friends. No help. No hope. The worst of the worst. And that's not God's desire. God's made it very plain, very clear. He's done everything. Made it possible. And made it easy. For any lost sinner to be saved. As a matter of fact, in Romans chapter 1. If you'll call upon the God of creation. You may not even know his name. But if you call upon the God of creation, he said, I'll, I'll, I'll honor that. I'll honor that. Because the God of creation, his, his name is Jesus. So just creation, God says, you can just look at the handiwork of God and know there's, there's a God who put it all together. That's how great our God is. 
That's how loving he is. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. You got any children lost? Family members, most of us do. We know where they're headed. Don't give up on them. Please don't give up on them. Keep on praying. Keep on inviting. And don't be afraid to warn them. They may get mad at you. May tell you to mind your own business. Just tell them that's what you're doing. You are my business. You're my family. You're my friend. I love you. I want to see you saved. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad you're saved? Praise God I am. I'm headed to heaven. Amen. As old Maze Jackson said, heaven bound with the hammer down. All because of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can rejoice in that. You know, when you hear sermons like this, I don't want you to leave out of here downhearted and downcast. Oh, my. No, leave here rejoicing. Now, here's why. You're going to heaven, and, and if you've got loved ones who are not yet saved, rejoice that they still got a chance. Amen. And you you pray for them and you witness to them. And of course, there's time for them to get in. Amen. Heaven's not full. There's plenty of room. Amen. And so let's don't forget that. Okay. I'll be back again tonight. Thank you, visitors, for coming. All come back and see us. If you come back for another wedding, just come see us. Okay. Have a safe journey. And thank you, other visitors, for coming. It's always good to have you. Uh, let's, well, we're going to close in a word of prayer. And then Brother Bird and I are going to count these votes over here after everybody leaves. Okay. All right, let's just be dismissed in a word of prayer. Uh, Brother Tommy Lamb, would you pray for us? It's okay if you...